All right, the next question. I get this all the time too, especially with everything that's going on. How environmentally sound is solar power really? Can the batteries in the old panels be recycled? Are they full of metals that are mined? Yes. There are precious metals that are mined to make the solar panels, just like your cell phones, batteries, everything is full of that stuff. Everything. When I say everything, I mean all electronics. This isn't just about solar power. Unfortunately, this whole power thing, at least around here, has turned very political. You know, the people hate the electric cars. I don't like them myself. I think it's silly when they come out with an electric powered truck that'll plow my driveway, haul my firewood, all that stuff. Maybe. We're not there yet. And probably not going to be in our lifetime. But as far as our solar power goes, yes, all of that stuff is recyclable, but it, it does come from those big nasty mines that you see. If you don't have solar power, those mines are still going to exist because every car in the world has at least one battery in it just to start the car. And like I said, all your electronics, they're all full of lithium. They're all full of all these, you know, crazy materials that have to be mined from these strip mines and stuff. Don't just blame solar power for that because it's not the case. It's a scare tactic and it's political. Shouldn't be because we should all kind of be in this together. But unfortunately, they made it political. But there's no difference. There's no difference. You, In my case, I use lead acid batteries. I'm hoping to get 20 years uh, out of my battery life. Before I have to uh, replace them. When it's time to replace them, usually the company that you buy for them wants them back for a core. And they actually give you money because there's only so much lead in the world. And recycled lead is just as good as lead that's mined. So they recycle those and what do they use them for? They make more batteries. So it's sustainable as much as everything else is. I guess that's the best way I can put it. Solar power isn't going to kill us all because it's going to ruin the environment. People say, well, they're clear-cutting big areas to set up these solar farms. Yeah, 200 years ago, they clear-cut big areas to set up real farms where cattle grazed, where they grew crops. It's no different. It's no different. There are vast areas of this country that aren't used for anything else. They won't let us drill oil there. You might as well build something on top of the ground that'll generate the power. But if you're gonna do it, do it right, do it smart. That hasn't happened yet, but we're working on it. I would like to add that the uh, a lot of people feel that solar panels are not recyclable. They're trash, they just take up space in the big trash compactor of life. But they actually, if you read up on it, they actually, We'll take those apart, all the pieces, the metal, the glass, whatever, sure. and they recycle that. Absolutely. So I think people think that they just, we, we'll just take them off the, the rack and we'll throw them away. And they don't, right. that isn't what um, happens. They actually get recycled. I keep hearing, you know, that solar panels and, you know, solar batteries and what have you, it's all cradle to grave, cradle to grave. Once you've got it, you can never get rid of it. Not the case. And... I don't plan on getting rid of my solar panels. I don't think that I will live long enough to see a time when I'll have to replace all my panels. 20 years from now, if we're still here, God willing, maybe uh, put up another array of another four panels and add to the system that we've already got to offset whatever the percentage of loss is. So our next question this person asks, where can I go to learn more about the realities of living on solar power? Seems to be a lot of conflicting information. Yes, there is. Unfortunately, the best and the worst information that you can find about it is on the internet. And I say that because you can find people on the internet in forums like the one that I participate in that 
are full of people that are actually living on solar power and they had to learn how to do this themselves too. So they've been through all these weird panic moments that you have. It's, it's different to understand if, if you're used to working with um, AC power when you start working with DC. You actually have a machine when you live off grid like us in your basement that's called an inverter. And what that inverter does is it takes the DC power that goes from your panels through your charge controller to your batteries and it turns that into AC power that'll run your regular AC home appliances. Okay, so the problem with that is, as the price of some of this stuff has come down, uh, and it's not really a problem because I love to see people experiment with it, but uh, you can go to uh, Northern Tool or Tractor Supply or any of those places, and you can buy small solar kits, you can buy solar panels, you can buy inverters, charge controllers, you can buy anything you want. And these people will go out and they'll set them up and they'll hook them to their garage or their shed. You know, it's kind of like a science project thing. And, and that is really cool because that's how you learn, in my opinion. You get to figure out how it works. But a lot of what happens is those people become what I like to call automatic internet experts. And they're going to tell you that you can run all this stuff on a couple deep cycle marine batteries wired for 110 out of 12 volt and you only got to have one panel and you'll be all set and I'm here to tell you it's a lot more complicated than that you may be able to run a refrigerator or freezer on that but it's not going to run for long lead acid batteries in general are not meant to be drawn down like a lithium battery is. You know, like your cell phone or one of those other batteries that they, they get legs. If you don't run that, that rechargeable battery down all the way, then charge it back up, it loses some of its usefulness, its longevity. Your lead acid batteries you use for solar are not like that. You wanna keep those topped off. They're like your car battery. If they go dead and you have to boost it to get it going, you've substantially shortened the life of that battery. Real solar power is the same way. It's the same way. So you have to be ha really careful about who you listen to. And you can find, you'll find the people out there that don't know what they're talking about that will tell you you can build this for next to nothing and how great it works. And then you're going to find people out there that are going to talk like they have a, a PhD in electronics and they're going to talk over your head and you're not going to understand what they're saying. So the best thing you can do, if you're interested, I think, is to find that local solar power company that is around your area and uh, find one, hopefully, that, that designs and installs standalone systems. Those people will be able to tell you how this really works. They're the ones you need to talk to, to talk about, you know, the size of your system, how many volts you should have, how many watts of solar you need, how many amps you need, how many amp hours you use. They can figure all that out just by coming to your house and doing like a site evaluation and looking at the stuff there that you're gonna run. And they'll be able to give you an estimate on what you need for a system. Those are the people you want to be listening to. That, or in my case, I was fortunate enough to have some friends that had lived off grid for many years already. So I was able to pick their brains and, uh, and come up with some real good down-to-earth factual information about how this stuff works. And uh, there are several ways to explain it. And it doesn't have to all be uh, based on algebra equations. You know, you, there's easier ways. That's all I'm going to say. So find somebody that can explain it to you in a way that you'll understand. And don't be afraid to ask questions. That's where I'd start out. I'm building a 20 by 24 foot cabin in the woods off grid. It will most likely have propane appliances and a few propane lights. 
I'd like to be able to have a few electric lights so that I can turn them on and off with the switch in the middle of the night. Possibly have a small microwave oven, small TV, phone, laptop chargers, radios, etc. How big of a system would that require? How much wattage in my solar array? How many batteries? How big of an inverter? Charge controller? How will it work if I want to add a generator backup? Okay. If you're into this like I am and you really want to live out in the woods and live on solar, this, this, gets, this is where it's cool. Because our system is much bigger than the one I'm about to describe to you. I've always kind of wanted to do one of these little systems because I think it would be really fun. Realistically, if you could get a couple of 200 watt panels or a couple of 150 watt panels, that's probably going to be enough for what you're going to use it for because you're not going to be running it constantly because you've already got all that propane gas stuff you're going to be running. So I'm going to say you, you probably need two, maybe three panels, something like that. It might be a good idea to look at the appliances that you actually want to run. And I say that because anytime you do use an inverter to change DC current to AC current, you have a loss of power. You can have up to a third, actually, of your power lost just in the transition from DC to AC. So if you're going to build a small camp like that and you're already going to have a bunch of stuff that's propane powered, like I'm guessing your refrigerator, um, maybe a hot water heater, stuff like that. So all you're really going to have is like lighting and charging uh, stuff. Maybe, like you said, maybe a microwave uh, small microwave, small TV, laptop, what have you. Well, the way things are this day and age, instead of buying all that stuff in 110 voltage, I'd stay away from that altogether. I would think about going to a uh, marine or a camper supply place. All their stuff is usually capable of running either on both AC and DC, or it's at least 12 or, or 24 volt DC powered. Which means, if you are only going to run stuff that's DC powered, like you'd run in a camper, you wouldn't even need an inverter, because you're running straight DC power. So you'd have zero power loss. You know, and the little LED lights, you can get those that run on 9 volt or AA or AAA batteries. You wouldn't even need to hook them to your system. I definitely see the value and having lights that you can just turn on instantly with a flick of a switch. If you need to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, stuff like that. You don't want to mess around lighting a propane lamp. Absolutely. But there's no reason in the world why you couldn't take two or three panels, maybe four, two batteries, four batteries. If you bought um, good batteries like the six volt rechargeable like the uh, golf cart batteries like we use they're more expensive but they're going to last a lot longer and you're going to get a lot more amps out of them and the amps are what this is all about the amps and when you're talking about dc you're talking about the volts so if you can keep your voltage low and your amps high and keep the inverter out of the situation you're going to have a really good setup so, you know, I, I don't know if you, I mean, I guess you could live on it that way. You just have to be kind of miserly about how much power you use, you know. But uh, if it's for grandpa's hunting camp up in the mountains, you could turn the thing off and on as you leave. Take the batteries home with you if you don't want them to get froze up or ruined. Uh, I think that would be really fun. I think that would be a really cool project to do. I really do. But that's what I think of doing. And if you, if you have some stuff that you need, you absolutely have to have AC power for. There's no way of getting away from it. You can go out and find yourself a, a fairly inexpensive inverter and mount that right with all your other power equipment. And it's going to have a couple little outlets on it. You can, those, you can use those with extension cords or actually, you know, wire your whole building to have a few AC outlets in it. You could do that. It's not a big deal. It's not like you're running it all the time.
right? Uh, as far as charging your batteries, if you add a generator into it, you can get an inverter that's an inverter charger, and that would allow you to hardwire a generator right into your building. And as soon as the generator starts, the inverter will see that AC power coming from the generator. And instead of being a inverter, it's going to switch over into charger mode. So your building will be running off the generator and what's left for power will go into the charge mode and go into your battery banks. Or if you don't want to have an inverter and you want to do 12 volt, like I mentioned before, or 24 volt, the thing to do is to get a regular small, like a oh, shoe marker makes them. There's all kinds of little battery chargers you can get where you can set the charge rate. If you've got a battery bank that's either 12 volt or 24 volt, and your charger is capable of charging that, we're not talking about boosting, we're just talking about charging. So you buy that small charger, and you plug that into your generator, and you go corner to corner, one positive or one negative on your battery bank, and everything's wired all right, that's going to charge that array like one big 12 or 24 volt battery. That's going to charge your whole battery bank, not your array. Your array is your panels. I misspoke there. But uh, really, it's not, not rocket scientist stuff. It's, you know, most of this stuff would fit in an area the size of a closet, to be honest with you. You could have it in there right out of sight. You'd want to keep your batteries vented if they're inside because when batteries charge, they produce hydrogen gas. And that's explosive. So you don't want that around. But uh, that's the same with all batteries, not just ones for solar power. So you want to be working on the safety angle, too. But, uh, yeah, so that's my answer to that question. That'd be fun. I'd build it. I'd love to see the pictures.